Alrighty hosses, welcome back and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about groups. So in the last video we added a new user, mom, so now me and my mom have access to this computer, but now I want to start setting up groups. So let's say that we, um, I don't know, maybe we're working for some hospital and my mom is a nurse by the way, so I was going to make a group for all the nurses and another group for all the doctors and maybe a group for, I don't know, like the surgeons. Surgeons is different than doctors, who freaking knows, but that's what we're going to do. Now if you guys are wondering why would you ever make a group, you probably already know this, but a group is a really easy way to set privileges or permissions for an entire set of people and that way you don't have to go to each individual user. What you can do is you can stick them all inside a group and say, hey, you guys are allowed to access these files but you guys are not allowed to access those files and it's just a really easy way to manage permissions for a bunch of users at once. Sounds awesome, let's go ahead and get started. So anytime we need to make a group, we need to run it as a super user and just write group add. Now I'll write the group name and I'll just name this nurses. So make sure I have the right privileges and boom, we now created a group called nurses. Now. I am going to add my mom into this group because, well, she's the only other user on this computer right now, but eventually more people are going to be added to it, you know, depending on what they do for work. So in order to add a user to a group, you call the command sudo user mod, and then you write minus a, let me type this first and then I'll explain what it means, minus g nurses mom. All right. So user mod just means we're modifying a user and this minus a what this means is we want to append them or add them to another group now this gets you see this a lot with minus capital G a lot and a lot of people don't understand the difference whenever they see a capital G and a lowercase g whenever you see a capital G it means we're gonna just add them to another group now if we have a lowercase g it's gonna change their primary group. So remember that I said that whenever I created mom, she was automatically added to another group with the same name. So right now she already belongs to a group called mom. Now if I just were to write lowercase g, it would remove her from mom and only add her to nurses. But I'm gonna say whenever I do this, now she's still in mom, but she's part of the nurses group as well. So she belongs to two groups kind of weird but um, you know that's how Linux works so I'm gonna hit enter and I now added my mom to the nurses group so my mom's in nurses and mom now if I ever want to delete my mom I don't know maybe I got mad at her because she told me that I couldn't have I don't know why would I get mad at my mom I would never but if I ever wanted to delete her she was worried about privacy issues then <laughs> like mom I'm your son this is my computer I'm not gonna hack you but you would just use user del which means user delete what user do I want to delete well I want to delete my mom I'm mad at her alright so that's how you create users that's how you create groups and that's how you add users and also delete them from groups and we already saw before um, all the different permissions for individual users and also groups so if you guys want to just stop watching this video and move on to the next one um, feel free but for those of you who want, um, who are looking for, you know, a pretty advanced explanation of how it works behind the scenes, then I'll show you guys something really cool. And um, by the way, don't follow along, like don't type what I'm typing, um, you know, on your own computer because you might mess something up. But I'll show you guys something cool. All right, so right now I'm in my home directory, and you know that whenever you like go up into a directory like desktop if you ever want to go back into home then you use dot dot well if you ever want to go back a couple of directories instead of calling cd dot dot cd dot dot as separate commands so you can use cd dot dot slash dot dot this means go up or go into my parent directory twice so whenever I run this then as you can see I am in like the main core directory so you can't get any deeper than this so again, that's why I said that don't really uh, mess with any of these files. But what I wanted to show you guys is this. Actually, I won't clear that out yet. 
So a lot of your system configuration files are in this etc directory right here. So if we navigate into etc, we do ls la, so we can see that a lot of important files are right in here. Now the passwords for users, and hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. Nope, I'm not gonna. Am I gonna? I don't know, I might. All right, so the passwords for every user is in this password file, and we know it's a file instead of a directory because it has a minus instead of a D. So all right, that looks pretty interesting. Let's take a look at that. Now to read a file, remember, we're just gonna call cat password. Now, all right, so this is the password file for all the users on the computer. And of course, my mom's not there because I deleted her. And by the way, your computer makes users for like different services as well. It's not just like you and root. Um, you can see that root is right here. Uh, mine is right here. And, you know, maybe some different software. They have um, a, a user account as well. But I want to explain what these things are for anyone who's interested. So you have a bunch of different pieces of information separated with a colon. This first one, of course, is the username. The second one is the password. But it says X right here because the actual passwords, even though that this is the password file, they aren't stored in here. So, all right, that's pretty interesting. I'll remember that for later on. Now, all of these other things are just the user ID, the group ID, and so apparently Bucky has 1,000, 1,000 for the user and group. This is, you can also um, have a real name for the user. So, it, you know, just this is the username and this is my actual real name, which would be like Bucky Roberts if I wanted to, optional. And this right here is my home directory. So if I ever wanted to change my home directory, then I would edit this piece of code right here. And this last bit of information, this is your shell path. So whenever you just open up your terminal or you're using, um, well, we'll talk more about uh, shell scripts and shell scripting and uh, why your shell path is important. But that is the path to your shell. So there you go. So let's jump back into this password thing because, you know, we're really worried about, uh, you know, concerned about that for whatever reason. Why are they all X'd out? Well, this is because, like I said, the actual passwords, they aren't stored in this file. And by the way, if you just want to, you know, hack into some system and start looking at the passwords, you can't do that. They're all encrypted. Linux always encrypts their passwords, so they're never stored in clear text. All right, well, we know they aren't all X, so where are they? They're actually in a directory or a folder called shadow. So this is where all of your passwords are. Now, if we try to look at this file, it said, hmm, permission denied. Even though they're encrypted, you're not allowed to look at everyone's password. So remember, I said that root was kind of the user that could do anything that they wanted. So since I have super user privileges, if I call sudo cat shadow, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm not allowed to open it. Hey, sudo. Yeah, you're opening it now. I'm going to tell you what to do. So boom, roasted, and there you go. So now you can see that, all right, a lot of the same information before, but instead of an X, this is my encrypted password. Now you're like, okay, what about these other guys right here? Why do they have a star? Well, I'll, show, I'll talk to you guys real briefly about the different password symbols. X, like we saw, it means that the password is stored in a separate shadow folder. And that's what we saw in the regular password file. The star means that the user can't log in. So this is just a user for some kind of service on your computer. It's no one that you want actually, you know, like SSHing into your computer and like an actual user account. They're different. They're for something else. And if you don't have any of these symbols, no encrypted text, no X, no star. This means that no password is required to log in. So that's someone that may be vulnerable. And um, that's something that you usually don't want. But there you go. Again, never mess with any of these files. This is just uh, 
something that happens behind the scenes so you never even want to be in this directory but if you want to know how users are stored and you know uh, where their password file is and how their passwords are stored then now you guys know how Linux works a little bit better under the hood so I'm just gonna move CD to move into my main home directory where I'm nice and safe clear everything out and boom I'm good to go so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe see you guys next time